Today, I'm gonna to show you the easy way to create your own custom Gutenberg blocks without using any PHP or JavaScript. And we're gonna do it with a free plugin called Lazy Blocks, which is an excellent alternative to paid plugins like ACF Pro and Genesis Custom Blocks Pro. Now, I've used Lazy Blocks on my own sites to create all kinds of custom blocks, everything from info boxes to affiliate callouts, and even this cool CSS style switcher widget that I use for my CSS tutorials. Today, we're gonna to start with the basics of using Lazy Blocks, but this is gonna be a multi-part series, so you're gonna to wanna to subscribe so you don't miss any of the upcoming videos. And with that, let's get started. All right, the plugin that we're gonna be using to make our blocks today is called Lazy Blocks. It's completely free, available in the official WordPress repository, and we're just gonna install this custom blocks constructor, Lazy Blocks. So we'll install now. And once you install it, you'll find uh, a Lazy Blocks section of your WordPress admin menu. So we're gonna go to add new, and we can create a new block from scratch. So let me do a really simple example first. So we'll call this a dual color heading. We're gonna make it very basic to start, and I'm gonna show you how you can increase the complexity if you want. So there's two sections here. There's the content controls, and these will be uh, controls that are over the top or directly in the block in the Gutenberg editor and inspector controls are controls you're gonna find over here in the sidebar. Um, and for this example, we're gonna put all our controls in the content. So what's the controls that we're gonna need? In the most basic example, we need a text box for the before text, a text box for the after text, and then we need a color. So we'll call this before text. And we're gonna make this uh, text box and you can set a character limit. Uh, I don't think I need to at this point. You can put it in a placeholder and we'll make this 50%. Then we're gonna just duplicate this uh, and change the settings. We're gonna call it after text, after text, after. And thirdly, we need a color. So we're gonna uh, call this the after color. And in the most basic example, we're only gonna change the text color of the last part of the heading. We're not gonna do it for the first part. Um, so after color is our control name. And you can just search for the available fields, but I know there's a color picker field. Do you wanna allow transparency? We don't need that. Um, and we're gonna output just the color. The next thing that we need is a template. And the most basic version of the template that you can use is with HTML and handlebars. And handlebars is basically just a little syntax that lets you put things like variables or um, field names directly in the HTML template without writing any sort of PHP code. And there's full documentation on the Lazy Blocks website about how handlebars works. And not only that, but for every different control type, they show you how to use them. For example, if you want to use the color picker, you can click on that in the documentation, click on handlebars in the usage, and it will show you how to put the control name into your HTML code. And if you wanna get more complex with handlebars, it even supports things like if, else, loops, and we'll talk more about the more advanced handlebars uses in a future tutorial. So let's go to our text field and just look at the documentation, and it says all you have to do to output this is put the control name. So um, we'll start with our before text. Our control name is before underscore text. So let's write our template. We're gonna wrap this in H2 tags, and then we're gonna go before text, and it will actually pull in your variables once you start typing. And then we're gonna put a span tag, and we'll say class equals after text. And in that span tag, we're gonna put the after text. And then we can actually just put an inline style right in here too. So we'll say style equals color, and then we use the after color, and click update. Let me use the same code for the front end and the back end of the editor. Now see how this works? Let's use this directly in a page. So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna go to my block library and if I just start typing lazy blocks, you can see that it will pull in all my blocks that I've created and published. So we have this dual color heading block. It even shows you a preview of what this is gonna look like. So we'll pull this in here. So I filled out my text. We're gonna choose a color. You can choose from your um, it automatically, it automatically uh, is pulling in my themes predefined colors, but I can also create a custom color. So I'm gonna click here and we'll just do this golden color. And it's showing you the preview of what this is gonna look like right in here. 
So there you have it, a simple dual color heading, and it's being output right on the page. Now there are a few modifications you might wanna make. For example, there's no space between these two elements, and yeah, you could manually put a space in the text box, but it would probably be good for our block template to insert this automatically. And also, by default, it's just an H2 heading. What if you wanna use this for different heading levels? Well, we can add that into our block as well. So let's add a control. We'll call this one heading level. I'm just gonna use the underscores to stay consistent. And we're gonna make this a select. So uh, you're basically choosing from a dropdown. And for our choices, we'll say H2, value is H2, add a choice. H3, values H3, and you could go all the way on down to H6. Um, I'm just gonna do H4 and stop there. Um, we're gonna set our default value to H2 and click update. And the other thing I could do is maybe give a custom color for the before text as well. So we'll take our after color, we're gonna duplicate this, and I'm gonna pull it up by the before text, make this before color. for color. Now all we have to do is adjust our template a little bit. So instead of using H2 in our template, we're gonna pull in the value of our heading level. And we also have to pull that in for the closing tags. So let's replace that with heading level here. And around our before text, we're gonna add a span tag. Class equals before text, and we'll again add inline styles. Style, color, before color. Make sure that closing tag is after the before text, so right there. Finally, I think for the uh, our style, I would add one more style rule. I for the after text, we're just going to say um, margin left, just to give a little bit of space between these two elements. And we'll click update. And let's go back and reload um, our page where we have the lazy blocks built in. So let's try this again. And we'll use this blue color here, and we're going to keep the after color as gold. And we'll make this an H3. And you can see it's showing exactly how this would look in the preview. Uh, and as we change the heading levels, the size is changing too. So it's working exactly as expected. You have, you can see that there's a nice space, uh, normal space size between the elements. And if we look at it on the front end, it looks great. And if we inspect the code, you can see, you can see that it's using the H3 tag, which is what we selected uh, in our block settings when we inserted it. All right, for our next example, let's create a more complex block, one that actually allows you to nest additional blocks of any type inside of it. And this is common for things like creating content boxes. So we're just gonna go add new, and I'll call this a callout box. And this time let's use the inspector controls instead, just so you can see how that's gonna work. So again, let's do the most basic version of this first, and then we'll kick it up a notch. Okay, so for the inspector controls, let's give the box a heading. So we'll say box heading. Uh, we'll give it a character limit of just just guessing here. We'll say 60 characters. We're gonna add another control. Um, we'll make it the box color. This will be a color picker again. And we're gonna use uh, this in conjunction with CSS variables to style multiple elements uh, using just one line of CSS. And then we're gonna add an inner content block. Um, and I believe this will be, let's see. Inner blocks. So we're gonna make that a content control and people can just automatically add inner blocks. Uh, we'll call it inner content. And you will add whatever you want in there. Uh, we'll put the pl placement in the in the content, 100% width. Next, let's make our template. So we have three controls. We have our heading, our inner content, and we have our color. So we'll 
call it a lazy callout box. We can use the box color to create a border top. So we'll say style border top three picks solid. And then we can use that color control that we set. And inside the box, we'll just make one more container we'll call it div class equals box content. And then we can put our inner content in here as well as our box heading. And one more thing I'd like to do is just wrap this heading in some H2 tags and put a div around our inner content as well to make for easier, easier styling later. So next let's go back to this post and we will uh, try inserting our block into the post. You can see it showing up right here, call out box. So um, I'm gonna put my heading. This is my box heading. I'll choose a custom color. Just choose this light blue here. And for the inner content, uh, I'm just gonna paste in some more ipsum for now. So that would just be a standard paragraph block. Um, but you could put anything you want in there. You could put as many blocks as you want. I could do the same thing. I could get um, put an image in there, whatever you want, video. This is just sort of an outer container that holds any inner content. And let's just go preview that on the front end and we can start styling it. And as you can see, something's not quite right. It's sticking the HTML tags in the text. So it's just outputting plain text with the HTML tags around it. It's not actually uh, executing the tags. And if this is your first time using lazy blocks, you might be really scratching your head. And in fact, I it's been a while since I used it. I was sort of forgetting uh, the mistake I made. But if we go to the documentation for inner blocks here, you can say, it says, if we look at handlebars, be careful to output HTML, you have to use a triple curly bracket, not just the double curly bracket when using the control name. So if we go back to our call out blocks box template here, if we simply add the third curly bracket there, and if we refresh the page, everything is now executing properly. And we can go ahead and style our box. So I'm just gonna use the additional CSS section of the customizer to do this, but you could also use a tool uh, like MicroThemer, which literally writes the CSS for you um, and you just visually design using the tool. And I recently released a video uh, as a basic introduction to MicroThemer that you can check out right up there. So let's give this some basic styles. We'll give it some padding. And maybe get rid of some of that margin under the heading and make it a bit smaller. And there you go. That is a very basic call out box, but obviously, you know, I love to kick things up a notch. So we're going to add some additional styling. We're going to add, I think an image to our box. And then I'm going to introduce you to some of the conditional handlebars tags. So we can actually style our box differently depending on whether or not you've specified an image or not so that you don't have to create multiple separate boxes for when you use an image or not an image. You simply have the option to use an image in your callout box. So let's go back here and we're gonna go to the controls, uh, inspector controls, we're gonna add another one and we'll call it um, box image. I'm gonna make that an image selector and we'll click update. And we're gonna have to add some additional styling rules here. So we will say, um, style, whoop, uh, background, URL, and we're going to get the URL from that control. So we'll say, uh, box image dot. And again, this is important to read the documentation. If we go to the image one, um, it says to output the control name and then the property. So uh, you can get multiple properties of the image. You can get the alt, the caption, the link, all these sorts of things. And we just want the URL. So we're going to go control name dot URL. And we're going to make that no repeat it just appears once and we'll center it. Okay, so if we go back to the front end of our site, you can see this is working. Um, obviously, this isn't how we want it to look, but the image is showing up. And we can do the rest of the styling on the front end. Now, there is one uh, change I want to make here. 
Um, I'm just gonna set the background URL inline and we're gonna do all the other styles. We're gonna just do them in the style sheet. Don't worry, we're gonna fix this quite quickly. All right, so now we're gonna add all those styles back to our CSS file. Um, so I've made the background size 80 pixels. I've said I'm not gonna repeat the background. It only appears once. And we're gonna put it from uh, 10 pixels from the top and left. Now we need to make some space on the left side, push all this content over so the background uh, has room to breathe. So we're just gonna say padding left 100 pixels. And I think that looks pretty good. Now the issue that we're gonna run into is what if you don't select an image for your box? Well, then you're gonna have all this empty space over here and no image. And I think that would look okay, but it's not gonna look great uh, and your users will notice. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna use the handlebars to conditionally add a class to our box if there is an image. And, then if, uh, and this allows us to style the box differently depending on whether an image was added or not. So let's look at the handlebar syntax and you can see, um, let me just zoom in a little bit here. Uh, the syntax is if control name exists, then it does this output or else it does the other output. So let's go back to our template here and we're just gonna add a class. So how do we do that? Um, we say if, right? Is that the syntax? If control name, and our control name in this case is uh, box image. Then we want to add the class and we'll call it has image. And then we just close our if block. So we'll say if, is that the right syntax? Yep, that's right. All right, let's try that. So we'll update. I got a fail error here because I forgot uh, one of my closing brackets. So we're gonna get that right, click update. Let's reload the page. Okay, now it's working right. And let's see if this worked. So we're gonna inspect the code and you can see it's out of the class has image. Now to see if it's really working, we need to go back here, remove the image, update. And on the front end, if we inspect that has image class is gone. So now all we have to do is change our styling depending on whether that class is there or not. We're gonna delete this padding rule and we're just gonna say lazy callout box, which is also has image class padding left 100 pixels. Now it doesn't do anything to this one because it doesn't have the had have image class. However, if we do, whoop, if we do put that image back, let's try this one more time. And we re reload the page, fingers crossed. Ta-da. Okay, and it was really that easy. And now adjusting the style of your box is as simple as swapping out the color and the image, and you've got a completely new design. Now, I know we've only just scratched the surface of what Lazy Blocks is capable of, but by now you should have a good enough understanding to install the plugin and start building something of your own. Get your hands dirty, experiment, and see how you like it. Then when you're ready, come back and check out my advanced Lazy Blocks tutorial, where I'm gonna cover things like looping through repeater fields, the power of handlebars helpers, and how to conditionally load the CSS for the custom blocks you've built. When that tutorial drops in a few days, you will see it right here. And until then, keep on building. I'll see you in the next one.